how to catch carp from rivers. In this episode, we're going to take a look at four steps that will help you catch more river carp. Firstly, let's look at location. It's so important on a river, even more so than when you're on a still water, to find those carp. Rivers are really long pieces of water and carp can be at any point along it. River carp also move around a lot. One day they could be upstream three miles, the next day they could be downstream another three miles. So of course, to find the fish, you'll need to do a lot of walking and looking. One of the most important pieces of kit that will help you find carp are Polaroid glasses. These will help cut out the glare. Without them, when you look across the surface, there can be a lot of reflection and you can't see deep down into the water. But put these on and it's a game changer. You can really see deeper into the water and it helps so much with finding where the fish are. So where are you going to find river carp? Well, there's no specific rule, but there are some areas which are more likely to hold fish than others. Firstly, great places to look are anywhere where there's structure. Carp will love to be sat in places where they feel safe. This could be near overhanging trees, snags in the water, lily pads, weed, and also man-made structures like locks and bridges. Also, if the river you're targeting is quite fast flowing, it's really worth keeping an eye on those slack areas. Carp are very different to other river species such as barbel and chub, which prefer to be in that faster water. Carp will almost always be sat in slacker, slower water where they don't need to fight against the flow. A lot of rivers are broken up into sections with weirs or lock gates. It's always worth taking a look at the top and the bottom of the stretch. This is because at the top of the stretch, you'll often find more oxygenated water, and at the bottom, you'll often find deeper water where it can be often quite silted up. And this more silty area at the bottom of the stretch can often hold a lot of natural food, which will of course bring carp into the area. Let's go around that tree. There's two of them. Sometimes our viewers might wonder uh, how we get the wildlife shots. It's with a very long lens like this. What 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 are you filming? It's squirrel. <laughs> very to be specific. Grey its Latin squirrel. name is Squirrelus Squirrelus. <laughs> they live in trees in the UK. We get grey ones down south. And that one was just feeding its young. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I'm trying to make up some stuff. To nice make lens though, Alex. Yeah, it's a, it's a big boy. Yeah. So that's location covered, you've found the carp, now let's talk about bait. Because river carp are constantly moving up and down the river, baiting can be extremely helpful to hold the fish in a specific spot. Pre-baiting a few days before you intend to fish can be a real edge and it can just give you confidence that the fish know where to find food on a regular basis. So you've found a spot that you like the look of and now it's time to put some bait in. The way we like to bait up cost effectively is to buy cheap dried particle online. Smaller particle baits such as hemp and maize are incredibly cheap and you can afford to put quite a lot of it in your swim. The only issue with baits like this is that if there's lots of nuisance fish such as bream or roach, they can often come in your swim, eat all of those smaller items of food and not leave anything for the carp which you're there to catch. If that's the case, then it's always a good idea to add some larger items of food such as tiger nuts and boilies. A point to keep in mind if you are feeding boilies and the stretch of river you're fishing is quite fast flowing, of course boilies are round and they will roll down with the flow. A good way to combat this is to use half baits or crumbed baits What tackle to use on a river? Well, there's not a great deal of difference between the rods and reels you'd use on a lake to the rods and reels you'd use on a flowing piece of water. The only thing you've got to bear in mind is that river carp fight incredibly hard. We like to use a 15 pound monofilament mainline and if we're fishing anywhere near snags, lily pads or overhanging trees, then we'll almost always use a snag leader. An armor cord or monofilament snag leader of a couple of rod lengths will be more than adequate to make sure you land those fish in any snaggy situations. 
Almost all the time we opt for 10 foot rods. These are really handy for not only stalking, but also fishing in tight swims. And on rivers, like the place we are today, it's an extremely thin stretch of river and you don't need a long rod. But if you are fishing a fast flowing piece of water where you need to keep your rod tips high or you're fishing over to a spot on the far side of the river and you want to keep maximum line out of the water, then a longer 12 foot rod is handy for that. Of course, a unhooking mat and a suitable sized landing net is also absolutely necessary when targeting river carp. The thing I love about river carp is the fact that they are hardly ever fished for. Most stretches of river are very unpressured pieces of water compared to say day ticket lakes. This makes them a lot easier to catch once you can find them. It also means that your rig presentation doesn't have to be complicated whatsoever. The rig I'll always use for river carping is a simple hair rig. The only thing you have to make sure of is that it's strong enough. River carp fight really hard, so you need to make sure that your end tackle is up to scratch. A coated braid hook link and a size four or six hook. The reason for having a big hook is not only because river carp fight really hard and a bigger, stronger hook will help you land them, but it's also because I like to use a big hook bait to avoid the bream and other nuisance fish. The hook bait I like to use consists of a 20mm bottom bait and a 15mm bright pop-up. When I'm tying up my rigs for river carping, I like to make them a little bit longer than I would on say a still water. This is because on a river, the flow brings down weed and leaves. This gets caught on your main line. It then slides down to the lead. If I was using a very short hook link, the weeds and leaves caught around the lead would also be covering the hook bait as well. So by having a larger separation between the lead and the hook bait, it means there's no chance that that weed or the leaves are covering the hook bait as well. What keeps me coming back on the rivers again and again is the unknown. Compared to still waters where the stock of a lake can often be very well known, on a river like this, you just never know what's gonna be in there. Other things I love about the river is the peacefulness and the wildlife. Even whilst we've been sat here now, we've seen a red kite and some buzzards and some <laughs> squirrels. <laughs> Squirrels were less impressive, but still. No, it, was still it was still great to see. And that's, yeah, that's just one of the things that I love about being out in these beautiful river locations. Click the video there for more river carving content. See you next time.